Hello, and welcome to another episode of Better Than Common Garage. My name is Jesse. I'm your host. Uh, today, we're working on the Barn Fine Bronco 2 behind me here. Uh, in the last video, we had a test drive, and that was mostly successful. Um, it needs some help with the brakes. That's what I'm going to be working on today. So <clears throat> it also resulted in finding a weak link, which I sort of suspected when I put in, but you can see here we have <clears throat> just a tickle of a leak coming from that radiator. So I'll have to replace that, but today I'm going to concentrate on the brakes. So here we go. All right, I got the wheels pulled off, the uh, B2 jacked up, so let's uh, take a look at these brakes. As you can see, the rotor is fairly rusted. Um, <clears throat> it looks to be pretty thin. I'm not quite sure what the spec is on it. I don't think I can turn that anymore. I think it might be too thin. Rotors for this must, they're probably pretty cheap. I haven't yet looked, but I want to replace the caliper and the line, seeing how this is hanging up. That's pretty much step one on that process to diagnose that. Usually that's what it is. Usually the line rusts on the inside, won't allow, it'll allow fluid to go in, but not enough to come back out, causing the caliper to bind. This might just be rusty, but it is my favorite brake design from Ford. They uh, made this super easy and serviceable. All you got to do is knock this pin out. There's another one down here. Just use a hammer and a punch. Caliper will slide off. This one's probably going to be tight, seeing how it's all but seized onto the rotor. But I am seeing good things down here. I mean... Look at all the grease that's on that tie rod, and it's still fairly tight. That's good to see. Um, it just needs a little TLC. Okay, as you saw, I uh, made quick work of the caliper removal. That's Seriously, my favorite uh, brake design ever. It, they are so simple to work on. It has these two little uh, rubber-filled pin-type things. They claim you're supposed to replace them every time. I honestly don't think I've ever replaced them. Uh, but that's just me. Don't do as I do. Do as I say, don't as I do. Uh, the wheel bearing feels pretty good uh, it's not grinding or anything um, so yeah let's uh, keep digging in here see what else we can find and uh, maybe get a little bit of uh, WD up there on the, the hard line so I can get that stuff off without having to run new brake lines All right, so as you saw in the uh, little bit of time lapse there, I was able to get that rotor off. Um, I don't exactly remember how, when the last time I was into one of these uh, 
hubs on the front ends of one of these Bronco 2s. It's been, been a minute. Uh, but the, I do believe the rotor needs replaced. It's severely thin. I, I do believe it's been turned several times. I'm going to have to look up the spec on thickness of this. I don't think I'll be able to turn it and save it. Obviously, it's too rusty to read to read any of the numbers or anything that are on it for your minimum thickness. But generally, there's like a lip here, right between where the pad rides and the inside of the rotor. <laughs> generally, there's a lip, but this one's straight across. But uh, also, if you notice the footwear I have on today, uh, the weather in Pennsylvania is right now it's on crack uh it is snowing out there's three four inches of snow outside right now so <laughs> i have my muck boots on i was shoveling snow before i came out here so i'm going to uh pro i gotta get some wd-40 on that line like i said before uh, i gotta get uh do that and then probably tear apart the other side to make sure I, when I buy all my parts, I get everything I need. If you didn't notice, uh, I had a little issue. I don't have a magnet. I couldn't find my uh, little magnet with a stick. To, and then this itty bitty, where's my camera at? Oh, I can't really see it. Focus, focus. Ooh, maybe not. Darn cell phones. But anyways, this little itty bitty gem here indexes the keyway here on the side of the spindle and also on the lock nut, the inside of the lock nut that holds your uh, wheel bearing in, sets your preload on your wheel bearings and stuff. I... I don't remember ever having to deal with that, but I'm sure I have. I've had, this will be my third Bronco 2, and uh, I've had four Explorers, and they are very similar to the Bronco 2. They're a little different, though. They're a little heavier duty. But like I said, it's been a minute since I've been inside one of these tearing apart stuff, so. I'm going to get you set up and we'll tear apart the other side. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I got the front end tore apart. Um, I discovered that somebody, in their infinite wisdom, beat the ever-living crap out of this spindle. I can assume trying to get the spindle off more than likely to replace ball joints. Uh, these these style front ends tend to uh chew up ball joints pretty quickly but it looks like they didn't have access to a torch or know how to use it but this is this is pretty bad so i'm probably going to replace the spindle i think i know a guy that has maybe one or two or 14 of those spares laying around so i got the Brake lines juiced up, hopefully getting them ready to come undone. I'll probably throw a little bit of heat at them, try to keep them from twisting off the hard line there, but we'll see. Uh, it's always a very real possibility whenever you're doing this kind of stuff is 
the rust just sort of goes and goes and goes and you just sort of replace everything until you find find the end of the rust. Uh, anybody that's worked on anything in northern states knows all about that. So <clears throat> I think this will be it for today. I'm going to go order a bunch of parts and I will probably resume this episode whenever I have those parts. We'll see you later. So I'm going to use the proper torque wrench and torque specs for this. Always use the right tools for the job. Never skimp out. The tools make you money. Like I said, always use the correct tool for the job. This is a hammer and a pry bar and also a uh, whatever size socket that is Now, let's make sure the hub works. It's free. Now well, we've got spinach. Free. Beautiful. Okay. Let's put on the calipulars. Need my hardware. Lines, new calipers, new hardware, new pads. This thing ought to lock them up 
right quick. No, it doesn't go like that, dummy. sake I'll put that on <coughs> always make sure your brake clip is properly tuned torque specs are used around here. And then we'll let that hopefully gravity bleed a little bit itself. Start coming up, fill the caliper up. And I'll get most, some of the air out. Still have to go through and bleed it. Oh hey, speak of the devil. It's a shut her down. Come on now. Eh? There it goes. Free. Free. Lock. Lock. Free. Beautiful. Where's my rack? Beach towels make the best rags. But it works.
Yeah, they just, they just, I mean, it's, it's really close to being what it's supposed to be, but I just, I don't think it's quite right. But it'll work, and it'll work just fine, so no worries. So, so now I'm going to have to call my brother and uh, have him come out and help me bleed the brakes. So we'll ca catch back up with you whenever we're to that point. BTCG garage. Second test run. We're testing the brakes out. Take number two. It's a look of happiness. Uh, it's a look of concern. <clears throat> Uh -huh. Got some breakage. Got some breakage. Now they seem a little spongy. I think we need to do a little bleeding. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of. No, that's wrong. This is me in the barn finding Bronco 2. It has been a minute, it's past inspection. And now we're going for a little drive. Got new tires put on it. Got new, uh, got a new radiator. Uh, got a little bit of gas. Uh, it is currently raining, but I'm not going to let that stop me from driving this thing. It's been a, it's been way too long. I've been itching to drive it and uh, feel it out and all that kind of stuff. Feel how good it runs and whatnot. So <clears throat> so far so good. So as I sit here contemplating my life's decisions, waiting on my supper to arrive, uh, a couple things. The fuel gauge is a little suspect along with the oil pressure gauge. I just put gas in this thing and just 30 bucks worth, which at 425 a gallon or 445 a gallon is not much. And it went straight to full. So that's a little sus, but now, let me turn you around here. Now, it's uh, reading properly, so I don't know what's up with that. The oil pressure gauge flickers back and forth, but I'm, I don't necessarily believe the gauge on that front either because the motor is super quiet. There's not a tap, not a tick. The uh, fan, is over ambitious. The freaking fan just for the engine, it, it, it won't disengage. It's a clutch fan, but it acts more like a flex fan. It's on all the time. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to replace that. The, uh, what else? The cruise control works. But straight up miracle on that. Uh, I got a lot of little things I can do on it, but right now it's just uh, more or less drive it and uh, work the bugs out as I go.
She's not perfect, but neither is the rest of them. So you can see that looks a little better, I think. Doesn't have like the the goatee anymore. <laughs> or the little sole patch, if you will, in front of the bumper. I'm gonna take some SOS pads to that. Uh, it's finally illegal. You can see it got me a sticker. The uh, just change the oil. Uh, fresh meats. 235 75 R15s. Just a tickle bigger than stock. Fits the wheel wells a little better. She does have the classic Bronco 2, you know, squat. So I got to address that. Of course, you know, every bushing and thing underneath it needs gone through. The uh, back brakes need attention. I have not touch them yet but I do need to do that and get oh e-brake cables and that kind of stuff so I do want to have an e-brake on this because if I want the wife to drive it and the boy to drive it they need to have an e-brake so but for right now this is this is going to be it for now I'm just going to do a little odds and ends here and there as I get time and money but it's summertime or getting close to being summertime. And uh, I have a honeydew project list that's quite sizable and not a lot of time to do it. So I'll be working on that. Uh, so for the time being, this project is I'm not gonna say done, but done for now. Uh, but with every project that I do, I uh, try to give myself a, a grade. So how did I do? Um, this project, it, it turned out to be, it's pretty common at the moment, but it has potential. Um, right now, I still have things that I need to fix immediately. Uh, the exhaust needs attention. You know, and the back brakes and the e-brake and that kind of stuff. They need it addressed before I drive it much more. The bushings and stuff in the suspension can wait. It needs shocks and leaf springs and all the rest. So, But I might do all the suspension work this winter because this winter I plan on painting it. We'll see how that goes. Uh, be a good time to do all of that all at once. So... We'll see. Maybe I'll save up and buy some parts and have them stockpiled whenever it's time to paint. But we'll see. So right now, the pro like I said, the project uh, the project rating is common. And this one this one ended up being pretty common, but it has the potential to be better than common. So uh, please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep working on more junk. See ya.